if I run you off? Have I been proselytizing you? No, I, well, that, I think that's part of the, <laughs> isn't that part of the, the deal? This is just an overly elaborate conversion of Johnny P. That's what it is. You know, you, you know, the, the fatwa came out from the Southern Baptist and they said, look, you know, spend an hour a week with this guy and broadcast it all over the world. We could, maybe we could get a few souls. This is Crossing Phase, the podcast featuring a Christian and a Muslim talking religion and politics. Your co-hosts for this adventure are me, Matt Hawkins, a once policy director for the Southern Baptist Convention, and my Muslim friend, the heavily bearded John Pinna. Show notes, bios, and all our social media links are available at crossingphase.com. We're available for your listening at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Overcast, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and TuneIn. On this episode, we spend the bulk of our time discussing a listener question. What sources might one use to get reliable information about the historical Jesus of Nazareth? Here now is Crossing Faiths. Well, I know one of our listeners had, uh, had suggested a question. I think it was on uh, the reliability of information about Jesus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, was it, did that come to you well, from, first, the, from someone? Well the, well, the first thing is we should probably talk about the fish. The fish. The symbol, just a brief thing. <clears throat> With the fish symbol, would you character what the fish symbol, the Jesus symbol, the the, the, the yeah. early Christian symbol of the fish? They call it is, the now what kind of, The what? The ichthus. The ichthus? The is that, now is that a, what kind the of name. fish is that? Is that a bone fish? <laughs> I know you've been trying to work at it. It is not, it is not a bone fish. It is just a fish. Presumably, Presumably, some kind of fish in the uh, popular in the Mediterranean. Is it the region. whale? I don't is think it it's the whale. whale. Like, is no. it the Jonah whale? Yeah. So no one knows the the fish, the like what kind of fish it is. I don't think it's a, a particular fish, other than having come from uh, the imagery that Jesus or the moments of Jesus's life where he's uh, feeding people and calling people to be fishers of men, and so it was a it was early oh, early Christian I symbol. Get it. Okay. Okay. That that alluded to. Was it, uh, Jesus Christ. Is it well? What about is it that is it related to the business where no one had the fish, and then he does the he, he did the. Yeah, I think he, you know. I'm not gonna it. say. I'm not gonna say. You know, yeah. we, remember right, the and loaves and fishes. Yeah, fish. mul- multiplied right. the loaves and fishes. Yeah. And you're not saying you you. I'm not gonna say what. I'm not gonna make a a thing a statement of whether or not those were magic baskets that the fish came out of, <laughs> like the like the cloak. I'm not gonna go down that road. <laughs> um, so. Um, yeah, no, we, yeah, where do you go to get, uh, so let's just say the two of us are sitting at a Texas, Texas roadhouse, uh-huh. you know, to get a steak and, uh, and where would I, and I, we're just, and I say, where, where would, where do you get reliable Jesus info? What's, what's the reliable source for Jesus info? <laughs> right. Well, that's, Where's that's, the Jesus? that's the million dollar question, right? Uh, well, no, we nobody, about the guy, the guy that the, the, the journalist that did the, what was it, the case for Jesus? Remember that? Yeah, the case for Christ. The case for Christ, and so it's the most documented thing in history. Yeah, event historical event in history. So out Lee, of that, Lee Strobel wrote uh, the case for Christ. Right. So where? So if we were gonna, so the Muslim perspective is the, that the 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 Injil, the New Testament, doesn't exist in its pure form, like right. the Quran or That's like right. Psalms or like been, the Torah. It's been contaminated, supposedly. Well, it's yeah, okay, yes, more or less. So, so, so it doesn't exist. It, it's it's somewhere, but it, it's yet to be found mm-hmm. in its pure form. Right. That's just so that's. I'll stipulate so that, that for the so, moment. But that's the that that's the traditional Muslim view. Yes. Well, it's a broad that's broad strokes. Okay, and and admittedly, you have the King James version. You got the Book of Mormon. We got all different types of of books out there that have been edited left and right. Right. So, and it's the most printed book in the world. So you tell me, where do you go for Jesus info? Is there a, is there a cave? Is there a, <laughs> is, you know, is there a, a, a pigeon carrier pigeon service? Where, what's the, how, where do you go? If you have, you turn around and you say, I need to figure out Jesus information. Yeah. What are the top three sources? Well, the, online and person. Right. Well, let's back up and, and a little more, more landscape. Right. So what's fascinating about this Jesus of Nazareth person is that virtually nobody with any, with any credibility believes that he did not exist. Right. So we believe there was a, 
uh, everybody's united, Jews, Christians, Muslims, that, and others that say, okay, there's a guy named Jesus of Nazareth, right? That was obviously featured prominently in world history. We, we disagree on the details about who he was and what, it me, what he means, right? But uh, Muslims believe in Isa, right? Yeah. So I just kind of want to underscore this, the, where, this, where there's agreement here, right? The agreement is the priesthood of, of, of Jesus, and, and he ascended, the ascension, and he didn't die, though. And... <laughs> Sorry, it's a little sliver. <laughs> and and the that at the end of the days he's coming to open up a can on the uh, the the Dajjal, the, the Antichrist, the the son of the the the, the, the Shaitan, the devil. Uh huh. Yeah. So so we're in complete agreement. So we're well, not concerned. complete agreement, but we we all agree <laughs> that there's this person named Jesus of Nazareth, right? And uh, we 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 disagree on who he is and what he means. And for that, we're trying to figure out a historic question, right? And so it, it's a question of history rather than a question of, say, empirical science, right? Because we can't observe it and we can't replicate it. So we're doing our best to derive answers from historic testimony, just like we would if we were asking questions about Muhammad, the prophet. Right. Or so like yeah, uh, so like we go to like Josephus, right? Yeah, like Josephus yeah. is the Jewish historian mm -hmm. who like documented Jesus. That's a, a source. Right. Historically. Exactly. The the, the Romans source historically, right? Exactly. So I, I you know, so yeah. So early and then church, we have the pop. And then you yeah. got you have early church, uh what we call the patriarchs, um, who within within a century or two are writing about this man named Jesus. Uh Justin Martyr for one uh, who committed his life to following someone who died a century, not, not much more than a century or more before him, um, a Jewish rabbi of all people. And uh, you have uh, other folks. Uh, so you're looking at early historic documents, but a main and a primary goal of history, right, is to locate the closest extant manuscript of whatever a source may be closest to the historic moment that it's describing, right? So we would trust more a document that was a hundred years after an event more so than we might trust a document that was a thousand years distant from the event. Right. Unless, unless you're Paul who has, who had direct, who is talking to Jesus. Right. Without even meeting him. Sure. True. And then direct access. Right? right. So there's only one Paul. Right. Only one Paul. Right. So there's, but he, so but he, he coexisted, right? And, but he coexisted with, with uh, the other apostles, right? And he, yeah, and he knew James, and yeah, yeah. So I mean, I get that, and Peter. you know. So I'm, but I'm just and Peter. So I, I'm just, I'm because there's certain special dudes, men and women. I shouldn't say just women, men and women that interacted with Jesus, yeah. That have not only in, they had the interaction with him, the face to face interaction. Paul didn't have it, but. But then, but then you have special people that are generally agreed upon, I think, in Christianity that had access that are prof I don't know if they're prophetic, but they did have access to divine interaction, yeah, conversations, combos, right? Yeah, like Paul. Yeah, yeah, Paul. Because like Paul so, interacted cause, with Christ when uh, a we believe resurrected Christ uh, uh, appeared to him. On the on his way to Damascus, right. So so, but he but and he but he also continued to claim that he had a continued conversation with didn't he? With, and and so he had all this. He had access where other people didn't. So what he writes is he has more credibility than someone who's writing a thousand years later because yeah, well, he had a lot of right. A lot of Paul's writings are viewed as as you know, part of the biblical canon part of the new testament right. canon so it's it's uh, it's as it is scripture according to us so uh, he he wrote uh, more of the new testament than anybody else did right and i'm just i'm just making that stipulation because only because there's special people in addition to the historical timeline that are considered to have access to to, to, to god and 
you know, the angels, yeah. the whole bit. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and he was a lot of those, a lot of his letters are corroborated by uh, other apostles who, who knew both Jesus while he was on earth and, and the apostle Paul. Right. Right. Okay. I don't know if that made any sense to do that, but I just wanted to make us, I feel <laughs> it like, I felt so, like it compelled it. Right. So the question is, you know, who, who do we, what documents and what, what pieces of history do we trust for information about the historic Jesus? And uh, Christians are going to say, well, we believe the Gospels and the New Testament is, uh, is reliable. It's a, it's a historic document. And uh, it's, it's corroborated by others like Josephus, who didn't talk a lot about Jesus, but uh, does does affirm that uh, Jesus, there was a Jesus of Nazareth and that he was put to death by uh, by the Roman government. So, um, and he was not at all, you know, he wasn't a Christian believer. He was a Jewish uh, historian and wasn't actually doesn't speak all that well of of Jesus of Nazareth, but his speaking about him uh, affirms his existence. Right. So. Uh, it's a basic uh, you know, practice of historians to look and see what other, right, who else is writing around this same time that also uh, reflects or, or discusses whatever event has taken place. Um, but we're going to look at, you know, we're going to look at uh, the, the thing I ask of, say, uh, non-believers, uh, even uh, atheists, they say, look, look first at the, at the Bible as a, as a historic document. Lots of different authors, lots of different styles of writings, a lot of different literature types. Um, but start there as look at it as a book, and uh, and and we go from there as far as uh, you know understanding better what the authors were trying to get at. But uh, we're going to say you know we learn a lot about Jesus from from the New Testament. Are you still there? Yes, sir. <laughs> Have I run you off? Have I been, have I been <laughs> proselytizing you? No, I. Well, that, I think that's part of the. Isn't that part of the the deal? Yeah, it's part of the on deal. this crossing face. It's, <laughs> it's like we're. It's a, that's the whole deal. This is just a. This is just an overly elaborate conversion of Johnny P. That's what it is. It's just like an over. <laughs> you know, you you know the the fatwa came out from the Southern Baptists, and they said, look. You know, spend an hour a week with this guy and broadcast it all over the world. We could, maybe we could get a few souls. We can, you know, you guys just aren't doing what the Mormons are doing. The Mormons just they they retroactively convert people, and that's the way to do it. <laughs> right. That's that they that's brilliant. God, it's it's we have to get um we have to get some more we have to get a Mormon on the show so we can ask direct questions. Yes. Yeah. We we don't want to insult the faith, but yeah, as evangelism goes, as it does seem like a, a shortcut. I, I I'm not insulting the faith at all. I I'm I think they have. I think it's just. I think the Book of Mormon is just amazing. I think it's really amazing. And plus, I'm a New Yorker. Joe, you know, Joe Smith's from New York. Yeah, all the all born our, in Vermont. Yeah, and uh, and he's from the and he's but he's from New York. All the, the business with is, all the business with the angel happened in uh, in New England, didn't it? New York. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Moroni came down, yeah. and my my Mormon friends, brothers and sisters, will call him Moroni, but we all know he was Italian because <laughs> he gave the first set of plates, and then he took the plates back, and they had to have another angel come. <laughs> it was a whole it was a whole song and dance. So, um, but I, I I would love to have a Mormon on so we could talk about their faith and how I just I I it's. I, I spent 10 years in, you know, based out in Nevada. And so I had some really wonderful interactions and, and conversations with the Mormon community, members of the Mormon community. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I, I, you know, they're the Israelites. How great is that? <laughs> Jesus came to America. How awesome is that? It's a great story, man. I it, love it, it. It is a pretty fascinating story. I got a couple of Mormon uh, friends in mind. Maybe we'll, we'll reach out and. And have someone on. So in the reliable sources, um, there's not much in existence. There's not much extant um, content about Jesus of Nazareth outside the Gospels. It's the closest, as far as the historic timeline, the closest, the closest authorship of documents uh, to the life of Christ. Everything else is uh, more distant. Um, so the question is, you know, 
to what extent do you trust the four gospels and, and the rest of the new Testament versus other stuff that came later that doesn't so much harmonize? Well, I mean, okay. So we have, all right. So I'm confused. We have the historical, the historical documents, right. From the Romans, yeah. the, 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 the Josephus and so forth. And then you would say you have the gospels. So there's nothing else like where, so what, all right, so if you were going to go online, let's just start with this. Yeah. You're going to go online, you want to find out about Jesus. And, you know, and this is from, we well, have to be careful because you're, this is an evangelical perspective. So we, these are navigating really treacherous waters here. This is, so, this is true. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I, and I'm, being, I'm joking. Mm? I'm, you know, I'm joking. But I, right. I know that, I know that like a Catholic would say, oh, no, you go to, you know, it's got to be the right. Pope's right, right. This website or something, yeah. right? So, um, and then if it was your, Greek Orthodox, you'd be their patriarchs. If you're, you know, Russian Orthodox, it'd be their patriarchs because they're the, they're the, uh, you know, God's viceroy on the planet, right? So, who, do, where do you like? Who's your like? Who's your who? What's your website? Just as an evangelical, what's your website? What's your guy and what's your book? <laughs> website guy and book. Well, like a person. So website, person, book. And I don't want to hear like, oh, my local pastor. I want yeah, to hear yeah. like, who's the Pope of, who's the Pope of evangelicals as you see it? Well, oh, well oh that's the God, thing. I mean, that. the joke about, I mean, the joke about having a, evangelicals having a Pope is the fact is, is that we, there isn't one. I mean, we're, we're all decentralized and, and no evangelical church has authority over another. So uh, there's no one central figure. Um, well, as let's far as like, the lineage. like Richard Land, right? Yeah. Is an authority, evangelical authority, Southern Baptist, yeah. Protestant authority, right? Yeah. And my um, and my former boss, right? So I and I'm bringing yeah, I'm bringing him specifically. So is like, would he be the guy you go to? You know, would you say I, I, you know, like I, you know, if I had a real, you know, you know, cosmological question about. Jesus, I yeah. would go to Richard Land because he's my he's my guy. Like you know, he's my boy. You know what yeah. I mean? I don't know. Is 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 that is that you know the person you'd go to, or would you go to you know Pastor Jeffers? <laughs> well, look, if you're it, they're somewhat different questions. I mean, if you're looking for uh, what we might call apologetics about kind of the defense of the faith, um, as far as research on on uh, Jesus of Nazareth, you know, I highlight who you highlighted before, Lee Strobel. Uh, he was a, he, uh, he was an investigative journalist for many years, I think with the Chicago Tribune, Tribune and he was an atheist and he set out to disprove in a journalistic investigation, uh, disprove the, the resurrection of Christ. And uh, he came away, away from it. This is a you know, spoiler alert. He came away from it. Uh, convinced that the evidence for Christ is pretty convincing. Um, uh, so that's one. Um, there are others. I think C.S. Lewis did a similar thing in an earlier generation. To C.S. Lewis, there was a, there's a classic question that, that C.S. Lewis raised, and it's called the C.S. Lewis trilemma. And uh, it doesn't prove that Jesus is who he said he was, but what it does is take one of the multiple options off the table. So the, the trilemma is that Jesus is either a Lord, liar, or a lunatic. Okay. Oh. Have you heard this before? No. Is, is this a book? No, no. It's, it's just a, <clears throat> I forget which book it, it, it's found in. I, it might be mere Christianity, but it might be something else. I'll, I'll have to look it up. Um, but the idea is that, Look, you can walk away from an account of Jesus thinking either he is truly Lord or he's a liar or he's a lunatic. But what you can't rationalize from the evidence, from historical documents, is that he was just some uh, really good moral philosopher or or really ethical guy or a model, you know, kind of like a, a moral guru of some sort because he clearly, at least from the biblical text, believed he was God, believed he was the son of God. And so it takes, it doesn't, it doesn't prove oh, I mean, which well, of the so, three well, options. You... On that, right? There's some dilemma on that because he, you know, there's, he said he was the son of man a lot. And then 
he was yeah. a Jewish rabbi and he was um is, there's a lot there's a little bit of there's a little bit of editing in some in some of the gospels there back and forth we we the son of man is a little bit different saying you sit at the right hand of the father you know that that that's the, those those statements are were common back then so there's a little bit of editing there which i don't want to I, I mean i don't I mean, this is a conversation for another time of muddying the waters but let's just i'm gonna go with <laughs> well well it gets well it gets to the it gets to the thought, point i don't know, I, don't, I, I would question whether he thought that way but i i, I the, 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 and maybe that's a conversation we can get into another time and maybe you could we could plead our case because father john would rain down on me on this one um as right. it has before yeah yeah <laughs> I know you hate. You're so exasperated. But you're so like, you're so patient with me. I love it. I, you're you're such a good. You, you know, whatever penance, whatever you get, whatever problems you have, always get absolved by me. By these calls. Well, <laughs> yeah. So, son of man uses for himself frequently. Uh, looking at a little data from my own New Testament course, it's found 69 times in the four synoptic gospels, 13 times in John. It's got Old Testament background on the term. Seems mostly there's a son of man figure in Daniel. Yeah, what, what, what it's, it is it is pretty vague. It, it, it is pretty vague. He, he, yeah, he tends you... to allude to it in his messianic title. Yeah. Um, but tends to kind of disarm and confuse his opponents. But there, I mean, son of man aside, I mean, I, if you look at just the text of Mark alone. Uh, to walk away and not think that Jesus thought of himself as the Son of God uh, would be pretty difficult. I'm gonna I'm gonna reread Mark now because <laughs> now you're you're calling out Mark. Let's well, you know and and I, I look I'm gonna read it I'm gonna read it page you know cover to cover. Well, Mark's Mark see Mark's a good one to start with because it's quick it's short. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. I mean, like I, I went through this Bible stuff. You know, I, 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 I you know, I had a Bible class when I was at Marist, but you know, that was you. Sure. It was required yeah. reading because it was a Catholic college, you know, and yeah, you yeah. had to, you had to read. I can't remember the classes that I had to have, but one was the Bible. Uh, there, there was there was three classes, and that you had that were Catholic Christian classes that were required part of the core. One was the Bible. Um, yeah. The other two, I can't remember, <laughs> to be honest with you. But, um, um, and one I got kicked out of. I know, I remember that one. Um, <laughs> well, uh, because the same questions I had then, I have now, I had then, and she was an, like an, an ex nun or a nun. Maybe she wasn't, yeah. and she was not tolerating any question huh. of anything right off the bat. So. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was a hard class. I'll tell you the story about that later, you know? Yeah. Well, Hey, you, you can tell the story at a, a different time, but I just want to underscore for, for my uh, Christian friends and listeners. Look, that's the kind of story I hear from non-Christian folks repeatedly. So I'm, I'm just pleading with my own evangelical, my own Christian tribe here. You want to hear uh, and even Catholics to take the questions of, <laughs> People, you want to you tell you exactly what happened to me with this class. I never finished that class. And yeah, I'm self-incriminating. I never finished that class. I'll tell you what happened. I, it was, it, it, so, so I would, I, I would talk the same way I talk right now. So G and, and Jesus is all right, hanging out with the apostles, his buddies, and they're sitting here and they're, and she would say, you're talking, speaking disrespectful about Jesus. Yeah. And I'd be like, what? <laughs> I'm like, we're in college. This is college, number one. Number two, what are you talking about? And so I don't know how that's disrespectful. I'm not saying, you know, this guy, you know, I'm being like, so Jesus with his friends, Jesus with the guys that he's hanging out. She'd be like, no, they're not, they don't, Jesus doesn't hang out. And I'm like, well, I, I beg to differ. So then she had the class favorite, and I can't remember his name. And we used to pass around articles in the morning. So I, I made it, I made it through like, maybe two, maybe three weeks worth of class. And yeah. uh, after she was telling me I was disrespectful at, by speaking casually, what she's called casually about Jesus, um, she then, and I'm a Sassian, so it's, you know, it's weird for her to say that, but anyways, whatever. Uh, she, we would, we were, 
passing around articles at, at the beginning of class. We'd sit in a circle and she had a teacher's pet, this guy, I can't remember his name. So I, I, I had this far side cartoon of my favorite one of uh, Moses parting his hair in front of yeah. the mirror. Hilarious. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I printed out two of them and I passed it <laughs> both what left and right. And everybody started laughing. And then it got to the, the teacher's pet. And I, and I said to him, you got any questions? You, you got any comments about that? Because he uh -huh. always had a con. He would always you know, be the teacher. She pulled me out of class and she says, I'm kicking you out of the class. Oh, no. uh, and I said, and I go, because she goes, because you, you, number one, you ask too many questions Two, you're disrespectful of Jesus. And three, you act, you speak too casually about Jesus. And, 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 you know, you're, you're, you're the, the, the brand of humor that you have in your class is, is being disruptive. Huh. And I just turned her and I said, and she goes, so I'm kicking you out of the class. And I go, well, it's too late for ad drop. She goes, and I said, I'm not taking the failing grade. So I'm coming back to class. And she goes, I'll yeah. give you a C if you don't come back. I said, give me a B and you don't ever see me again. And she goes, okay. Goodness gracious. And that's exactly what happened. What a mess. So, you know, what a mess. What a, lo what a loss of an opportunity. So, you know, it's, that's, 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 I mean, on my, on my grandfather's grave, that's exactly what happened. And I never, I was in that class for three and a half weeks and then I never came back and that was it. Yeah. Re returned my books and, and I was, I was happy because I, 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 had, I had a fourth in class, you know, I had four classes that whole semester. Um, um, but I, it, in the same respect as a, someone who studies religion, who, you know, was, that was one that was my minor was religion and religion, yeah. you know, I majored in Asian and European history, minored in Russian religion, it, you know, Asian and European history touches on religion a lot. I excelled in all my other classes, but she was the most rigid and it was, it was, it was, I thought very inappropriate to be at a college where. At liberal arts college where someone would do when someone would broker a deal like that and kick you out yeah. um you know i mean yeah. i have a sense of humor about moses parting his hair that's pretty funny <laughs> i always like the far side jokes the far side comics um well i think i i think that's uh i was not expecting the conversation to go that direction but that's uh it's a pretty fascinating and uh crucial crucial tale i think yeah. Because here, look, I mean, I, you know, I, I, Christians ought to not feel threatened by questions from non believers about our faith and about Jesus. I mean, well, I expect Christians thing, to be should... reverent about Jesus. I don't, I don't so much expect non believers to be ex exceedingly reverent about Jesus. I expect them not to be disrespectful, but I expect them not to be like, uh, you know, as reverent as, as we are. Yeah. But here's, but here's the problem is that everybody is so, so ev people feel very, they're like, okay, let's, let's talk. Uh, they, they feel very upfront about talking about Islam and very, very casual. I remember we had a conversation about fake Islam, fake Muslims and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and people yeah. get so nervous. Why can't we, why can't we draw pictures of the prophet? Well, here's the problem is that when you have, you're just as rigid on your side with your business you know, so it's not, you know, that's the, pro that's part of the problem, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I just sent you, I just sent you that, that my favorite far side cartoons, the biblical <laughs> cartoons, so you can post them otherwise. <laughs> so they're all, like I said, two of them, <laughs> two of them have to do with Moses. They all have to, all three have to do with Moses. Oh my goodness. Tell me the one it's about Hermit isn't so, it, it's so funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these are my favorite. These are my oh, these are these aren't even far sides. These are just Moses. These are just Moses uh, cartoons. Right. These are just three That's Moses. Funny. They're my favorite ones. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I'm fixated on Moses. And we talked about the Moses staff. Yeah, yeah. And the other ones. So we'll we'll we'll, up, we'll I'll upload them for this episode. They're pretty funny. Moses is parting his hair. He's uh, parting a creek away from his friend who's fishing. So the guy can't reach any fish in the water it's pretty funny that's funny those are good <laughs> <laughs> so anyways um, i love you man and and like right. i said it's, it's a good convo um you no know, i really think we got we you know we hit we we hit upon some of the the high points of what you you know you would consider strong resources for you know the, the jesus you know where you would get information on jesus and and we should that's a question we should ask 
everybody, you know, we should talk to Father John, yeah. you know, when, when, when we yeah. have somebody like where, where's, where's your go to spot? Yeah. 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 Well, and currently, I, I, while we wrap this up, I'd plug a, a recent uh, project uh, on a website called gospelproject.com, uh, mainly because they have some really fascinating videos uh, that explain some pretty complex theological stuff and, and the claims of the Bible uh, in a really unique and, and compelling way. So uh, I'll link those in the show notes, too. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, sir. Love you, man. Be safe overseas. Come back soon. Yes, sir. I'll see you in a little bit. All right, man. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye. This has been Crossing Phase with Matt Hawkins and John Penna, a podcast of Roll Top Productions. If you like what you hear and would like to help defray the cost of the show, consider sponsoring us on Patreon by visiting crossingphase.com. Crossing Phase is available on all your favorite podcast outlets, including iTunes, Google Podcast, Overcast, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and TuneIn. We'd appreciate your review of our program, especially in the iTunes store. Let us know what you think of the show via Twitter, at MTHawk, at JT Pinna, or at Crossing Phase. Music for this episode is courtesy Vajra, whose music is available at thevajratemple.com, Spotify, iTunes, and Amazon. Show notes for this episode and more are available at crossingfaiths.com. Mm-hmm.